welcome to another edition of Ask Away Wednesday, where Chris and I uh, are here answering some of the top questions around data governance and data security. The question today, Christopher, why have we seen so many do-it-yourself data governance strategies fail this year thus far? It's a great question. I think there's a lot of different facets to this answer. Um, you know, platforms like Snowflake you know, they have very, very rich features to achieve data governance. Um, and then oftentimes there's other players in the ecosystem, but, you know, this, the platforms, they, they want to make it easy for you to enable data governance and they give you the tools to do it. And the tools are great um, when you're in like a sandbox environment. Um, but when you start to consider a large organization or even just some of the mid midsize organizations, you start to think about, Who's consuming the data? Are they going to be expecting the data governance to be enforced? You think about all of the other operational players who needs to be setting policy, who needs to be editing policy. And then you think about how you're going to materialize changes over time. James has a great line that when you do it yourself, you're basically inheriting a shadow software development life cycle, right? It's like you want to make one simple change to policy. You have to go through development, test, pre-prod, and then somehow get promoted all the way to production. Um, companies don't think about that because the tools appear to be so easy, and they are, um, but the operational capability around the tools is kind of masked away and not thought about until later. And so um, that's kind of one facet. Another facet is, um, you know, there's always an excitement to get data up into the cloud once something like Snowflake is purchased, um, and you might kind of forego some critical decision-making things like, picking a security standard you want to apply, you want to adhere to like a NIST standard. Another one that I've seen in the field pretty often, especially lately is um, kind of a permissioning hierarchy. Like, are you going to go pure role-based uh, role based access control? Um, or are you going to do an attribute-based access control? Oftentimes what I see with the customers is some kind of variant, not clear de definition of how the roles are laid out. Um, and so just a little bit of thoughtfulness um, into how you're going to operationalize these things goes kind of a, a long way. One, uh, just kind of a follow up there. I, I know you've been uh, dropped into a number of new customer accounts where, you know, we're replacing existing tools or um, uh, coming into it in already kind of established practice. How many of these DIY data governance projects or strategies do you think were bogged or or stalled because of how overloaded the term data governance is. I mean, we we've been we've been kind of marching towards data access governance, all right, to try to differentiate there. But I know security and access control are technically a part of data governance. But how how do you see across the different industries and customers you've worked with so far this year? How do they define data governance? And do you think that's adding to the problem, or do you think the definition is pretty solid and folks are getting it? No, it's certainly adding to the problem. It's not black and white, and it's not even a single shade of shade of gray. It is a spectrum of gray, um, and that definitely adds to the problem. People, um, you know, in in an organization might not even understand where their role stops and another role begins. Um, and then also, you know, sometimes what I've seen is the data teams themselves just automatically implement the governance features, not thinking about how other teams are going to be consuming the data. I can think of one company in the healthcare space right now where that's been um, kind of problematic. And so um, just getting a unified strategy is is very valuable. Yep. All righty. Well, uh, thank you all for listening. Uh, if you want to uh, see how Chris is helping uh, companies get back on track, why don't you DM him and ask him for his racy diagram slides and it it's a very, very positive uh, set of outcomes. But uh, thank you all for uh, for tuning in today. Uh, we will look for more questions. Please comment down below or submit directly. Uh, have a good week, everyone. Bye, everyone.